So uh, tonight we have come together to discuss um, some of the topics that have come up in the last couple of weeks worth of classes. Um, and so today's conversation is going to start off with the first question on the screen, um, which is this idea of can HOTS or higher order thinking um, skills develop or occur without the use of LOTS, lower order thinking skills? And who would like to start us off? Go for it, Jeff. Don't stand on ceremony. Oh, I have no ceremony. Okay, the idea for me, it's kind of one of those things that's not as easy as it sounds. Um, it almost sounds like a this or a that kind of answer, you know, yes or no. Um, and I think in the whole kind of spirit of HOTS, that wouldn't be a fair thing to do. Um, truly, they are so intermingled that um, there has to be each piece in a, in a piece of, of discussion. You know, right now I'm going to think about my philosophy course. It becomes very easy because it's an awful lot of higher order thinking going on in there. But if I were, I have the choice with my students to go ahead and, and just uh, discuss uh, maybe in the meaning of life, what is determinism? When we talk about determinism as this piece of, of theory. That's a possibility. That's lower order only, right? Just coming to gris, graps, kind of grips with um, the concepts. But generally speaking, that's not how it's it's processed. We start with, well, what's the meaning of life? What do you, why do you think we're even here? Is there any reason for us to go from one stage to the other? And that question that then asks them allows them to have context for the lower order pieces. Okay, so the they could just learn what determinism is, who the thinkers are, that kind of stuff. But by giving them an opportunity to ask a question and, and uh, come up with some solution about it, they develop the lots. So when what I'm saying in long and short is, no, you don't have to have the lower order informational stuff in order to carry on the conversation. Because they may well come up with the idea, well, you know, do we actually get to have choice in our own free will when you're talking about existence? And that whole piece then gives an opening to discuss what determinism is. But just knowing about determinism doesn't give them any chance to engage in meaningful discourse. So oftentimes you need lots to enable HOTS, but sometimes using HOTS to get to lots will always give you a better result. <laughs> That was, that was a great closing. I'm going to add in uh, another example from another perspective that I just came to me as you were talking. When I think of using um, HOTS before or, or the idea of can they occur um, simultaneously or without first teaching the LOTS, I think of the concept of language. When a child learns language, are, you, are they learning just the word um, are they learning just how to sound it out? Or simultaneously, are they learning the meaning of the word? Are they learning how to use the word, how to speak the word, the symbol behind the word? I mean, there's a lot more happening at the same time as that basic knowledge of learning, you know, maybe the sound of that word. Um, so there's a lot more meaning and symbols and, and, and everything else is occurring at the same time. That's kind of how I, I think of as HOTS, you know, that when you're learning HOTS, you, like you said, are also learning those basic foundational lots along with them. You do need them, um, but I think that they can occur simultaneously. And it comes back to the, what we talked about there with the calculator the other day, and, and there's some real rich discussion there. Using Absolutely. a calculator in a classroom enables you to reach higher order, um, and you maybe don't need to know exactly how to do the, the processes, um, of mathematics in order to be able to analyze what it is that's coming out that cal calculator and where's the real value. Absolutely. The, the process, if you know how to do the process of problem solving and you understand, um, you know, that you have to make these groups and do, you know, something else, the idea of being able to do addition or multiplication really quickly in your, in your head is not very important as it is the fact that you can manipulate the numbers on a graph and understand what the graph is showing. You know, I, I always think of graphing and, you know, these functions, the idea of having to calculate a function would take me forever, but I can interpret what a graph means. And that's more important to my analysis. Yeah, the interesting thing is, uh, it, I, I think we start losing a, a bit of uh, the ability to actually make sense of all of these pieces 
because we don't take them in context with each other. And, and where I'm going with this is the whole idea of doing long division with a pencil and a piece of paper is just using another technology. I mean, if we were really, really serious about all of this, we would have to do long division with multiple digits in our head, nothing else. That would be truly thinking about the process and being able to go through it. The rest of this is just, you know, the pencil and the paper, the calculator, the computer, the, the spreadsheet, etc., is just a mechanism of using or uh, getting the machine to do part of the calculation, some of the processing, so that we can do the pieces, as you were saying, Katie, that are more important. It's the ability to make sense out of what the question is to begin with, and then coming up with some semblance of a process that is going to enable us to answer the question, and then make sense out of what the answer is and how does it apply to the original question? Does it solve it? Does it not solve it? Why? Why not? Those kinds of pieces. The mechanics are just that. They're just mechanics. Why should we be concentrating on the mechanics? We have machines that can do that for us. And there's a piece that's rolling around in my head here, and I don't know if it's going to come out very clearly or, or even articulated, come out, be articulated very well, but at some point during the process of learning how to do um, mathematics, for example, like long division, there was higher order thinking involved in it, right? That person had to be, had to be able to take a lower order knowledge piece and go ahead and extend it to reach further. Uh, they had to be able to see that answer and say, okay, I think that makes sense because I started with this number, you know, and this is a factor of this number. So those higher order things were taking place at some time. So maybe in learning the lower order things at some time, there is, there is HOTS value. But as we proceed further um, and do deeper analysis, should we get hung up on what is now no longer a higher order piece of thinking? Right? We're now just doing long division becomes, because it's mechanical to us at that point, becomes lower order. Why should we have to spend an awful lot more time reaching and solving a problem when it's no longer a real mental exercise for us any longer? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, well. I'm just going to finish this off, if you don't mind. I, I just put it into the chat box, but in case uh, people can't actually read it when it comes out in video form. The epistemological competency, which is the competency or the order that we're actually looking at here, it requires that the learner um, needs to be able to assign, and I got carried away with the grammar anyways, the learner needs to be able to assign the lower order processes to the computer. To be able to do that, they need to know two things. They need to know the field of study, and they know how to get, the, they, they must know how to get the computer to actually do that processing. So it's really, really a matter of a lot of knowledge that people have to bring to it. It's not simple, and it's not a way of cheating. So people need to get that through their heads. It is not cheating. It requires a lot of knowledge to be able to make use of computers to help us in the epistemological order. Go for it. On that note of cheating, which was a perfect segue, I have a question. The next question that we're going to talk about is this whole idea of cheating or faking higher order thinking and lower order thinking. So can you cheat or fake higher order thinking? Um, yes or no, and if so, how? And can you fake lower order thinking? And if yes or no, how? Can I jump in first? Absolutely, go so ahead. Part of the question, can you fake lots? You certainly can. Not a problem. Anytime you actually write a test, and you do very well without really understanding the content, you fake yourself through it. You have cheated yourself, really, uh, is what it comes down to. Can you fake hot? Well, this is where I would go back to the learning community, the community that's around you. If they are doing the job that Helen Longino suggests in her 1994 paper, if they are truly going to be um, critiquing the work that you have put forward, so that you can come to new understandings, build new understandings, there is absolutely no way that you can fake the hots. 
if they're not doing their job, yeah, they'll let you coast. It's interesting what you're saying, Roland. I'm just thinking in my e-learning classes that I do um, with my students online. I remember when we first got into e-learning as in a high school setting, you know, in, you know, there was always a discussion of rigor and relevance, right? Are we going to ensure that these online courses have adequate rigor and relevance? And they're going to say, well, aren't the kids going to cheat? Aren't they going to be able to get online and get their answers? Aren't they going to be able to do all these things that gets them to play the, day, the game of school, uh, how do you say, maybe breaking the rules? The answer to that was very simple. Ensure that the questions that you create for your students require a process of learning and taking their knowledge and s explaining the so what. You can't cheat that. You can't go ahead and, and go ahead and, and give an answer that somebody else's if it's a piece of your own intellectual property. You've had to be go through that process. But it's darn sure easy to go online and have uh, find it up that the Battle of Hastings is in 1066. Right? The, the facts and figures are easy to get. And again, you know, how important is it to to remember those lots? You know, um, when you get out into the real world, this whole idea of you can you can fake lower thinking all throughout school, and you can do you can be really book smart and do really well on the test. But when you get out into your field and you have to apply, then you know it's really going to start to show.